Hi everyone, welcome to another guided meditation. My name is Sage and I work for the Oregon City Public Library. Today is all about emotional preparedness. So some of us are very into being prepared. I think everyone to a degree is into the idea of being prepared for the unknown or even for things that you might know are coming um, that seem big or maybe scary or uh, just like take a lot of effort so being prepared uh, lessens the effort when those things do come right however there are a lot of things that we might feel like we cannot no matter what prepare ourselves for and this might be uh if you're a teacher this might be like a scenario with a student that you couldn't have predicted or uh even like interpersonal relationships with your family members or your co-workers or yourself there's um just a lot of different things that might come up that we might not know how to deal with at the time uh as we've learned from the past two years there's also a lot of unexpected things that might happen in our environment in the world around us that feel really out of our control and as much as we might, you know, put together our wildfire to go bags or uh, vac get vaccinated and um, feel prepared for these things to an extent, there's also an element of emotional preparedness because especially talking about things that have happened in our world, in our state this last year, uh, things are really stressful and um, it's hard to prepare yourself for honestly that kind of trauma so this is just a little bit of a practice you can do this every day if you'd like um, just when you're maybe feeling a heightened sense of like existential dread or fear of the unknown or lack of control um, you can try this out and the idea behind this, the purpose, is that this will help you kind of build this foundation of not necessarily resilience, but it can play into resilience. And it, it's also just that sense of being emotionally prepared for something that might potentially, potentially rock you emotionally. So that's the topic. <laughs> so get comfortable. Find a nice seat, lie down if you'd like, maybe grab a pillow or a blanket, something really cozy and comforting and grounding. You can close your eyes if you'd like, or you can soften your gaze. As always, starting by checking in with the breath. Just noticing where you're at right now, especially if you are in one of those more heightened states of anxiety or existential dread or lack of control. Breathing in. And letting it go. So we're going to bring our awareness to our surroundings. You can keep your or open your eyes if you'd like. That helps you ground yourself in your uh, space. But we'll just start by connecting with our senses. So start with touch. Notice the textures of anything that meets your hands or your toes. Notice any smells. Any sounds or vibrations. The taste in your mouth. Maybe noticing what you see around you could also just be what you see with your eyes closed. <laughs> Start by grounding ourselves. And just reminding your body that you're here, you're safe in this moment, you're alive. 
maybe add touch here. You can place a hand on your chest or your belly or even give yourself a nice squeeze. So notice any potential changes in your heartbeat. In your posture, we can pay attention to our body. Our bodies have a lot to say. We let the shoulders fall. We roll out the neck if it's feeling really stiff and if it's been holding on to a lot of this stress. So consider your situation. Right now, what dangers present themselves to you? What feels scary? And you don't have to stay here long. Just notice where you feel that in your belly, even the thought of thinking about it. And then breathe it out, let it go. If it feels safe to kind of stay in this thought for just a moment, consider where you are now. You're alive, you're safe. You're able to experience every beautiful thing around you in this moment. It's always hard and scary to think about the future, to think about the unknown. Again, when those things, some of those things might feel really out of our control. And a lot of meditation teachers and practitioners might preach this idea of letting go of things you can't control, but sometimes that's not realistic. So notice where this feeling lives in your body. And then give it a name. It can be a simple name like Sandy or Jeff, I don't know. Or it can be a fun, maybe like drag persona name or something. The name that I have <laughs> for this kind of catastrophizing that I do every night at 1 a.m. Um, I call it Catastrophizer. And Catastro is sometimes uh, loud, too loud. But there are some things I can do to calm them down, like take a cold shower, go on a walk. And these things might be different for every single person. So just consider for a moment a couple of things that kind of challenge that catastrophizing thinker that lives inside of you. That person who is always worried for the future, with or without knowing what will happen. person who wants so badly to be in control. What can you do for them? That's both nourishing to every aspect of yourself and to your community.
take three more breaths. Try to make them full belly breaths. It's all good. We're all we're all still here. The flowers are still growing. So take time today to nurture this idea of being emotionally prepared for anything, even when it's hard and scary and the looming sense of hopelessness and ex existential dread is overpowering. Remember your breath and your touch and the world around you and the people who love you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.